Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory, where last time we fixed our nuclear power plant so that the nuclear waste isn't backed up and our power is actually stable. And now we'll never have to worry about this problem again. But that doesn't mean we don't got problems. You see, we still gotta deal with this bad boy, our old fuel power plant because it's still making the vast majority of our fuel, rubber, and plastic reserves, and we gotta cut our world off of this. Because this entire biome here is gonna get completely redone with Update 6, which is gonna be coming out very, very, very soon. And after the little nuclear fiasco, I want to try to have localized oil production wherever possible, including at our main base. And I have a brand new oil setup design that is gonna knock your socks off. But first, let's talk about localized food production with today's sponsor, HelloFresh. It's a meal kit service that brings fresh, pre-measured ingredients right to your door. Now look, I love cooking and trying new things, but it's a lot of work. So if I just have to cook myself, I have to find weird ingredients that I'm probably gonna just use once. And sometimes the portions of what you buy are huge. So you just get stuck with it for months. So usually if I cook at home, I just make boring meals. It's like ketchup. HelloFresh, though, has easy-to-follow step-by-step recipes and pre-portioned ingredients. Of course, it saves me tons of time, too, so I can always be trying new things without having to spend my whole afternoon grocery shopping to find the ingredients. And with 50 weekly options, including a rotating selection of items at HelloFresh Market, there's plenty of new things to choose from. So use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGKIBITSJUNE16 for up to 16 free meals plus 3 surprise gifts across 6 HelloFresh boxes, plus free shipping. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. So be sure to check out the description and sign up today. And thank you HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Back to the game though, where do we get our ingredients for our oil production here? Well, good news, in update 6, we added in an oil well just down over here in the corner of the swamp. So I guess if you want to have like a nuclear setup, you'd have a little bit of stuff to play with. And by a little bit, I mean like just a little bit. I think this is like the worst oil node in the game. Let's find out. And let's see what we're messing with. 180. Is that like per node? Let's blast that bad boy up. 450? Does that mean the whole well? I'm sorry. So every single one of these must be making... No, there's no way. Like how much oil are we getting out of these? What? 70? <laughs> 75. Uh huh. So we're getting less than a full pipe of crude oil, and we're using 650 megawatts to get it. Sheesh. That is an expensive project. And how are we going to transport this up to our base over there? Well, it looks like we have a nice little path through this way. And then, <laughs> and then up the side of this cliff? Are you kidding me? Well, that's going to take a minute. But fortunately for Mr. Kibbs, as you saw in the heatsink video, I'm pretty good at making these towers. Though I did super lock out with this gap in the cliffs here. Without it, oh bud, this would have been a nightmare project. Now we can just zoop on through and the project will be easy. Also, we're gonna need some water for this. And fortunately, the swamp has plenty of water, so we're good here too. So that should be all of our resources then that we should need. And now functionally, things are gonna get a little weird. So we're gonna be making a recycled oil setup, but differently this time. This time, we're gonna be using fuel generators to our advantage. And super quick, if you're not familiar with like how oil recycling and all that stuff works in the game, check out one of my older videos where I make a massive plant all about it. But TLDR, what you wanna do is get all the alternate recipes in the game pretty much, get this alternate heavy oil residue recipe. So you make the residue in the resin. Then you take the heavy oil residue to make not residual fuel, ah, but diluted fuel using the heavy oil residue in water to make fuel. Once you have all the fuel, then you go back to a refinery 
and you use the fuel to make recycled rubber and recycled plastic. And that sounds really simple, but trust me, it's not because, oh boy, when you have to balance out the items, things get crazy. But this time, we're not going to balance out the items. It's just it won't be as efficient as a perfectly calculated system. Like at the other oil factory I was mentioning before. Oh, but wait, before we keep building, we need this place to look aesthetically awesome. So this is a huge part of my main base here. This is like the central tower where everything is put together. And then there's gonna be auxiliary towers all around it, like here, there, and here, which will kind of just make the center tower look cool. So in turn, this one has to look kind of cool as well. So we're gonna base it mostly off of concrete. Like we want it to look like a giant concrete slab just gripping the mountain down here. So first up, this all gotta go because it's going off the mountain, A. Eh? And then this all has to be concrete. So materials, concrete, yes, yes. And immediately we need to make this platform bigger actually. Okay, a little bit better now. Here's the thing. I would love this just to be like concrete going all the way up to the sky. But we're not gonna have enough room. Like this many tiles for A, the blenders, and then B, making all of the refineries? Yeah. This ain't gonna work out, bud. We're gonna run out of space real quick. So in a perfect world, I'd love it if we could just use walls here. The problem is using walls, even if they're concrete walls, they, they build in like the center between both foundations. So you kind of see there's like that little bit that goes over the edge there. That drives me nuts. I really, really don't like that. But it's something that's been addressed, but only with the frame walls. So you could use a frame wall here, and then with the scroll wheel, see that? You can have it be on the front or back. It's not in the center. It's perfect. Why can't all the walls be like this? I don't know. Anyway, this is a problem that I didn't know how to overcome until I recently did a live stream where a very clever viewer pointed out something awesome. So instead of trying to put the wall down on just a foundation, you can put a pillar down and you can have that zoop out. And then when you wanna try and build a wall here, you can build the wall wherever you want. So we can line it up perfectly then with the foundation like right there. Then we can build more as we did. Make them all concrete. And bada boom! No problems at all. The texture's different, sure, but hey, it's flush and looks fantastic. You know what? Could we have just done this with a road barrier? I don't think we could have because the road barriers, they kind of snap still. And if we just put a wall right on top, does that work? No. Okay, so yeah, using this pillar method is the way to go here in this very specific situation. And yeah, this is looking pretty cool. I even left the concrete pillars here just as like an aesthetic. Then throughout this factory though, I wanna have little divots in it where we'll be able to see the actual production lines moving or at least covering some areas with different materials so it's not just all just concrete brick. So overall, not bad. Oh, and I got the pipes in as well. Yeah, tower's done. Very cool, moving on. So inside, the blenders are spaced out and ready to go. And I wanted those on the first floor so they could be hidden away and we could have all the refineries on the upper floors because they have that really cool smokestack, which I like a lot. So we wanna have that on the outside or at least going into like a roof, invisible, like it's a cool thing, you know? So I've clipped through some walls here. So just the input is visible. Next, I'm thinking like how we do the front and I'm leaning towards doing something a little weird, but pretty much boxing this whole space in with frames because I want there to be another floor here because we still have like a lot more machines to go here. And we need a floor and we need something to support it. And I feel like I've done like pillar supports with like every other project. So we're trying something a little different this time. Though a giant wall that all looks the same. Eh, it's a good idea, but let's, let's go back to our other idea and combine the two. So we'll have that. 
Then we'll have just some basic walls going up here. We'll cut out a little cubby space. And I suppose like all of the heavy oil residue or maybe the fuel or something can go up this wall and up to the next floor. Yeah, recipe wise though, these are the heavy oil residue refineries. So we just set them to this, blow away the clock speed and call it a day. By the way, all the math I've already kind of done because I have a spreadsheet on how to make a whole super oil setup. So we're not really gonna focus a lot on the numbers, but mostly the logic. Because with this whole system, since we are going to have extra byproducts, if anything ever fills up, like say we have too much polymer resin and this fills up, then that stops the heavy oil residue and it stops everything. So everything needs to have the ability to overflow into an awesome sink or a fuel generator. Because I think that's pretty much the easiest way to get rid of fuel. Wait, what am I doing? We have to get rid of the polymer resin first. So that'll go this way. And then we'll bring it up to the next floor we'll, where we should be able to start on the rubber and plastic. But with the resin, we need this to jumpstart the system. Because as I showed with the recycling recipes here, we need some of the other material combined with fuel to make the material we want. So we're just gonna have the resin then turn into a little bit of plastic and a little bit of rubber. It'll build up and then it'll start the other systems. And then I have some clever ways to make it a little bit more efficient. So concepts are good. Next, we're gonna have some rubber and plastic. We're gonna wanna build that up. So we'll put some storage containers about here. So the outputs will go into these bins. The polymer resin will have to split up. Yeah, it like has to be like somewhere like right here. Uh, part of it will go, no. Wow, oh, this is so, uh, my mind, it's melting. Some of it has to go to an awesome sink. Like we cannot have anything completely build up or else whole system goes oof. But then the rest has to go to these machines. Yes. Okay, and these machines be these bins. These bins bring rubber and plastic upstairs. So that's all for the resin, and then the oil residue goes downstairs to the blenders. So everything was fine, and all I had to do was hook up all the belts and the pipes, and oh boy, it looks crazier than it actually is. It's basically what I showed you guys, just a little bit more organized, and things are actually kind of working. So all of this stuff is going into these guys now, so we have some rubber and plastic to get the system started. I have a smart splitter here. So say the polymer resin backs up too much, it can overflow into the awesome zinc, and we're good to go. And then the rubber and plastic can go upstairs, where things have gotten a little crazy looking. Crazy looking. Not actually that crazy. Uh, this goes up to these, the recycling plants. So just take some rubber, some fuel, makes plastic, and off they go. So all these are fully overclocked, I presume, since a lot of the materials we're making here are gonna go to our main base and just back up. So I've overclocked them to the max, even though we cannot support this, so that whenever we run out of stuff at the main base, these machines will kick it into high gear, make us like a billion rubber in a minute, and we're fine. Cool. Got some fuel generators over there. So the fuel will come up, go scooting through all of the refineries, and then once it's done, it will scoot back, and then into a fuel generator to burn off. So we don't need to worry about the fuel backing up. The heavy oil residue shouldn't back up either, technically. Because it'd be turned into fuel, yeah, and then the fuel is sent to this, so the fuel burns up. And then the plastic and the rubber, if it does back up in this system, goes through some smart splitters again, up to here, combines onto this line, and off to an awesome sink. So all materials here, if they back up, they have an exit. We should be fine to let this rip. All of the rubber and plastic we need now is good to go. Wait. Wait, we, <laughs> wait, we didn't just need rubber and plastic. We need fuel. That's how I scoot around on my jetpack. Uh, we can fix that, right? We can just change one of these up? No. <laughs> and we have like, <laughs> oh, I didn't think about this. I, I was so tied up on making all the rubber and plastic. Uh, I don't know. 
Okay. Okay, think, think. Could we set up a fuel thing here? What do we need really for it? Just need like a constructor and a packager, right? It's small. It'll fit. Totally. Please. Please. Clearance, why? Oh my gosh, dude. After all of this, after all of this spaghetti, do you know how hard it was to fit everything in here? It's crazy, okay? It's crazy. And now we're two blocks short because I don't have a packager? You gotta be kidding me. It's literally two machines. All we need to do is use plastic, a little bit of plastic, to make the canisters, and then we fill it up in the packager. Package fuel GG easy done. You know what? We're gonna be bringing the rubber and plastic out this way. I, I'm not doing this. We're going to be building the fuel stuff just over here. This little tower in between all these other hills is just for logistics, so like belts and stuff would move through here. But at this point, we're gonna have to make it a little production facility. Just a little one. Because again, it's just like one machine there, another over here, and it should be fine. So something quick and simple like this. It's perfect, it's great. Got a couple extra storage containers down here in case we need the extra fuel. But we have the constructor making the casters, a little bit of plastic being split over this way. We have tons of space to store casters as well. So whenever we run out of fuel, it can quickly fill up more. And yeah, all the lines combine and then they will go off to the main base. And we can replace the other rubber fuel and plastic lines with these. Cool. Awesome. None of it really matters though, if this doesn't work. So this is pretty much done. All I have to do is the bottom decorations here, and also troubleshoot it. So let's turn on the switch and see how it goes. So we got the crude inbound, water taken a moment, but there it is. So that means we should be able to make heavy oil residue upstairs, it looks like it. Yeah, there's the polymer resin, so that means the residue pipes are uh, running. Fantastic. And downstairs, what's up? Or, <laughs> what's going down? <laughs> uh, literally nothing. We saw the heavy oil residue was being made. So why is there nothing being blended? Why is there nothing in the pipes downstairs? Did I just mess up a pipe? Probably it, that's a classic kids move. Oh, I must have misconnected something at some point and there's crude oil in there, so let's just flush it. Ah, yeah, there we go. Flying through the system now. So that means the fuel's rocking and rolling and the plastic and rubber recycling is online. Also, I went ahead and I added an extra little part to this system. So at the end of the line, once we make all the plastic and the rubber end, if any needs to overflow, it gets synced, right? I added in another overflow though. So this overflow will go back into this floor, where the polymer resin is making, what's it called? Is making the plastic and the rubber to start the whole system. So once the system is running, It'll fill up these two storage containers, and that'll help the system continue to run even better. So we can jumpstart things by just filling up the bins ourselves. Right on, that got the whole system running perfectly. Everything's rocking, everything's rolling, and since there's nowhere for the rubber or plastic to go, uh, the extra stuff is being sent to the awesome sink. That just keeps everything moving, everything grooving, so it doesn't stall out. So yeah. This was significantly easier to put together than like a perfectly balanced recycling system. The problem is, at some points, you're going to have to throw materials into like waste bins, like an awesome sink or a fuel power plant, which sucks. If you do all the math correctly, you don't waste anything and it'll run perfectly always. But that takes like six times longer to actually set up, so you know? What's more valuable, your time or the items you're trying to get? Hmm. Down here though, the packaging of course is scootin' and is actually done because again, there's nowhere for things to go because the belts all just go to this wall here and then into our production chains. And the last thing we have to do for the fuel factory here is just to make the decorations. And cool, it's done. So add a little balcony over there, which we'll be using in the near future. And then the bottom is a weird type of support structure. 
that even though we're done that project, we are not done with our goal today, which is getting off of all of the oil products from the fuel power plant. So just on a Twitch live stream, I very, very, very quickly set up this temporary rubber and plastic setup over at our nuclear support factory here because we have to take off our training wheels and get rid of this fuel power plant, which makes like 100,000 megawatts of power. It is the reason why I wasn't super afraid of the nuclear meltdowns, because we always had this to kind of fall back on. But the biome's updating, so everything here gotta go. So let's dig in, time to dance, get rid of this whole 100 hour project. No more pipes, no more fuel, no more nothing over here. We must destroy. We must prepare for the future and wipe out the old. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, imagine, right? No, this all gotta go. Okay, JK, that was all just for fun. No, I'm just gonna delete this with a mod. And it's gone. Problem resolved. Spire Coast is now empty and ready for update six. So that's gonna be all then. So hope you all enjoyed and thank you for watching, but have a fantastic rest of your day and bye-bye.